You are watching Sammy, the Interviewing Toucan, made possible by the Indiana Young Reader Center. Hey everybody, I'm Sammy and I'm here today with Sharon Bigswaller. Hi Sharon, how are you today? Hi, I'm good. Hi. Hi, it's so nice to talk to you. Tell me a little bit about yourself and your connection to Indiana. I'm an Indiana native, so I am a Hoosier through and through. My ancestors came over in the 1900s because of the steel mills. And my dad worked in the steel mill, my grandpa worked in the steel mill, everybody worked in the steel mill. So I've got steel running through my veins pretty much. Now, I never worked in the steel mill. I worked as a park ranger. We live right in the heart of Indiana Dunes National Park. And so I started volunteering there when I was very young, about 13. And then by the time I was 18, I worked in the Youth Conservation Corps at Chelberg Farm, which um, has horses. And that's kind of how I started because I'm a horse girl. And when I was 20, I worked at the Grand Canyon and then I made my way west and I moved to California for a while. Then I moved to England, but my family's here in Indiana. So I moved back and I live on a little farm right in the heart of Indiana Dunes National Park. So I'm kind of back where I started. Lake Michigan calls to me no matter where I am in the world. I love all of that. I'm mm -hmm. kind of jealous about all of your wonderful experiences that you've had in your life. You know? And I just love Indiana Dunes up there. Well, Sharon, mm -hmm. tell us a little bit about your work. You can see I have this new button. It says Read Local, and it was from Indiana Humanities through the Indiana Authors Award, which you were shortlisted for, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And it was for this book, Girls on the Verge. So how did it feel when you found out that you were shortlisted for the award? Oh, I was so excited. I couldn't believe it. Editors at Millen had sent at Holt. They had nominated me, and I had previously won, um, well, you know, you don't really win, you get on lists. And um, the Young Adult Library Association had given me the top 10 books in the United States for 2020, and that was really thrilling. And then I found out that I got on the short list for the Indiana Awards, and I was so excited. It was really wonderful. And I am so proud of the winners of all of this. I just think it's great. We have so many wonderful books in Indiana. You know, sometimes I think people always look to the big cities and say, oh, you know, people who live in New York or California are such good writers. They're in the Midwest too, so it's very Absolutely, nice. we have so many wonderful writers here, including mm -hmm. you, and I'm really excited to be here <laughs> talking with you. So can you tell us a little bit more about your creative journey? Where are you in it right now, and where do you hope to be someday? I, um, what I do is I um, think up an idea. So like I say, if I'll be walking or I'll see something kind of neat, um, like for instance, the Forbidden Orchid, um, I came up with that idea when I lived in England. Um, I went to a um, museum exhibition about plant uh, collectors and they had such crazy lives. I mean, all the plants that you see um, in garden shops and in your house was collected by some plant hunter and they still exist today and they'll go in areas where no one has ever gone and discover plants you know that no one has ever known and they'll bring them back and nurseries will grow them and then um we'll just have them as our plants you know so these are ideas that i come up with you know um and that they're really fun so i think oh what would it be like if a teenage girl became a plant hunter and like, how would that work? And then I start researching and I go and I go as far back as I can. Um, and I pick a year that I want it to be set. I start writing, like, I want this scene to be in here. You know, I want, I want to have a, um, a few like really big scenes where there's something going on, you know, they're, they're trapped somewhere or they fall or somebody gets sick or injured or hurt, you know, something, like that so i'll call that i call that a signpost scene so i'll have a few of those and so i know where i'm going because it's, i get confused when i start editing my own work so i try to keep myself you know on the straight and narrow um and so that's what i'll do and then i'll just start writing for some scenes and i'll mess around with them and i'll send them to my agent and say you know is this anything and he'll say oh i just sold a book like that and then you have to also be willing and able to just drop the book. Like I've had a couple of books, even being a, an author that sells that didn't sell. And so a year's work is like now I can't use it. So 
that happens, you know, and you just have to swallow hard and get your pen back working again. Oh, I just, I always think it's so interesting to hear about the process that authors go through. And I love what you said about creating signpost scenes. Mm -hmm. That sounds super helpful to somebody who maybe is, is trying to become an author and they're not sure what they're doing wrong or whatever. You know, mm -hmm. some, sometimes just doing that planning for your novel ahead of time, it can really change how the novel ends up um, looking in the end, right? Yes, it does. And it also, the good thing about it is it helps you with your plot. And it also tells you if you really have a book, maybe it's a short story, maybe it's a magazine article, maybe it's a poem. So you might start out wanting to write something, say about, I don't know, um, Alexander Hamilton. And you find out, oh, this would make a great musical. And, you know. <laughs> exactly. So, Gosh. Right. And that's so much easier than writing, you know, I don't know, 50,000 words, like a lot of people do in November, which yeah. is write your own novel. Yeah. Yep. And it's 50,000 words. And a lot of times it's just, there's nothing you can use out of it. It's good practice though. You know, it's very good practice. Absolutely. Definitely. Um, mm -hmm. So Sharon, I know we're in the middle of a health crisis right now. How are you mm -hmm. doing? Do you have any advice for other people? Oh yeah. I've, um, it's been a very strange year. I think for all of us, first of all, I'm very privileged. As I said earlier, I live near the beach. I live in near the woods. I have horses, goats. I have a very big garden. So for me being in quarantine, I was able to, you know, have fresh air every day, do the things I usually do. But then I cut my finger really badly in July and I wasn't able to do any of the stuff I usually do. I couldn't go out and be, I couldn't ride my bike. I couldn't be out, you know, working in the garden or, you know, being around anything. And I was really sort of sad. I don't like watching TV. I don't like sitting around. So my niece was over one day and she was telling me how she was coping. So she told me about this video game and I was absolutely hooked and I would never played a video game before. Can you and hear I, the music? What is it? It's Animal Crossing. Oh yes, Animal <laughs> Crossing. So are you, are you a big fan? I am a huge fan. I've never played video games. I mean, I grew up with Pac-Man and Pong and, you know, I mean, we were like really old school and I just never, I was, I rode horses and I was never inside long enough to play any kind of game like that. Like I said, I was a park ranger, la la. And so I saw it with my niece and I'm like, that looks really fun. So my island is now five stars and I have Lily of the Valley and I have the golden watering can and I have gold roses. So I feel like I'm really a good player now. <laughs> oh, that's so fun. You know, you're my first author to actually talk about video games. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think video games can, you know, they have a narrative. There's a lot of reading involved a lot of times. It seems like people are, are more excited about video games and they, they can see a lot of the benefits from playing them. And clearly it's been helpful for you right now, right? Yeah, very. And I just love it. It's kept me from being sad. You know, I can't play my guitar. I can't do this. I can't do that. And my finger hurt, really hurt for a long, long time. And it just was wonderful. And I, good. I really can't tell anybody, you know, don't play video games because what's the difference between that and watching TV, you know? Right. Totally so. true. And actually mm -hmm. video games are more interactive. So there you go. Yeah. Well, Sharon, yeah. this has been so much fun. Thank you so Thank much you. for the interview. Welcome. Oh, I want to tell you one more thing. Yes, do. Since you're a bird, one of my villagers is an ostrich. How about that? Oh, I think that's so fun. And her name is Phoebe. Oh, <laughs> Phoebe the ostrich. You know, I have a special affinity to ostriches because um, <clears throat> as a bird, I can't actually fly and neither can they. So, you know. Yeah. We have that that's in common. True. Yeah, that's yeah. true. All right. Well, gosh, <laughs> Sharon, this has been so great. Everybody, this is your favorite Hoosier Toucan encouraging you to read yeah. local. So long.